Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. Now if you spend any time reading the comments on my videos, you will see that quite a few of them are people insulting me as well as insulting other people who follow the science. I generally ignore these insults, but there is one particular insult that does affect me quite deeply. And that is the people who tell me to get my booster. Or in some cases, suggest I get several. Now, I do find this quite difficult to talk about. So I will just show you a clip where I talked about it previously. But anti vaxxers have an even more devastating insult. Yes, you guessed it. They suggest you get another booster. Of course, every time I hear this, I'm reduced to a blubbering mess because it's just so hurtful. But I'll be strong for this video. Okay, just breathe, Susan. <sighs> Sorry, guys, I'm going to have to take a break. I just can't go on at the moment. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm fine now. But I really wish my trolls would just stick to the misogyny and not hit me below the belt with booster insults. I mean, it's so confusing. Cindy gets annual vaccinations and no one insults her about it. And prior to COVID, lots of people got annual flu shots and no one batted an eyelid. But people don't seem to understand why some people require or desire COVID booster shops, shots. Now, you may be wondering why I'm even bringing this up again, given how much it distresses me. Well, it turns out that someone who didn't realise that telling you to get your booster is a devastating insult went and got their booster over 200 times. In fact, it is believed that he got 217 vaccinations for COVID in all. And what happened as a result of those 217 vaccinations is the subject of this study here, which is entitled Adaptive Immune Responses Are Larger and Functionally Preserved in a Hypervaccinated Individual. Now, before I take you through their findings, I just want to remind you that having 217 COVID vaccinations is not recommended for anyone. And the gentleman was not following medical advice when he took them. So this all came about when the researchers saw newspaper coverage of a man suspected of having at least 90 COVID jabs to sell vaccination cards. They contacted him via the prosecutor and asked if he'd be willing to undergo tests to determine what effects, if any, all the vaccinations had had. And he agreed. It's also important to mention that in the end, no criminal charges were laid and his reasons for getting all the vaccinations were described as personal. The researchers were able to independently confirm that he had definitely had 134 of the 217 vaccines that he was claiming. And they were also able to confirm that he had had a number of different vaccines, including Pfizer, BNT, Moderna, AstraZeneca and J&J. &J. So what were the effects of taking all these vaccines? Well, firstly, the individual reported that he experienced no vaccine-related side effects. The researchers also had access to 62 routine clinical chemistry parameters taken between 2019 and 2023, and they showed no abnormalities attributable to the vaccine. What this means is he did not suffer kidney damage or liver damage, he did not experience significant muscle breakdown, and he did not develop an autoimmune disease. Because if he had, it would show up in the blood tests. 
There were some parameters where blood levels were above the normal range, like his LDL cholesterol, for example, but this was already elevated in 2019 prior to him getting any vaccines. He had also undergone a number of PCR and antigen tests during this time period that had all been negative for SARS-CoV-2 and had a number of nucleocapsid antibody tests that were also negative. Of course, as we discussed in previous videos, being negative for nucleocapsid antibodies doesn't mean that you definitely haven't had COVID. But there is certainly no evidence that he has had it. Now, a concern with having this many vaccine doses is that it could have a negative impact on the immune system. The researchers looked at this extensively and there was no evidence of this. Firstly, they compared the levels of spike antibodies in the individual who they refer to as him with levels in controls who had had three vaccines. And the levels were unsurprisingly higher in him. And the y-axis is using a logarithmic scale. So what appears to be a small difference when comparing the levels after him's 215th dose with levels after our third dose is actually quite substantial. Importantly, though, antibody levels still contracted over time, as they should, and increased again after him's 217th dose which means he was still capable of mounting an immune response. They also looked at the neutralizing capacity of him's antibodies, and it was 5.4 times higher than the controls for wild-type SARS-CoV-2 and 11.5 times higher for Omicron. And there was also no evidence of T-cell exhaustion which is something that some people thought could happen with repeated vaccinations. Spike-specific CD8 T cells were elevated about six times compared with controls and were still boosted by vaccination 217. And the fact that there was no evidence of T cell exhaustion is consistent with other studies that have investigated this in people who have had more modest numbers of vaccines. But what about immunity to other antigens? Was that affected by getting a huge number of COVID vaccines? Nope. Epstein-Barr virus-specific T cells were similar in size and phenotype compared to controlled donors which indicates that COVID hypervaccination did not affect responses towards other antigens. And they also looked at a number of other parameters related to the immune system and found nothing concerning. And you can check these out in the study later if you're interested. Now, obviously, this is a case study of one person, so the findings aren't generalizable. And no one is suggesting that anyone should get this many vaccines. However, it is worth mentioning that a scare tactic used by a lot of anti-vaxxers is to falsely claim that you will continually make spike proteins if you are vaccinated with mRNA vaccines. For a period of about nine months, him would most likely have been continually making spike proteins owing to how regularly he was getting vaccinated. And nothing untoward happened. So even if the continuous spike protein claims were true, there's no reason why they would be concerning. But just to reiterate, they're not true. Now, for those of you who didn't pick up on my bad acting at the beginning of the video, when I said that I was distressed about people telling me to get my booster, I wasn't being serious. As far as insults go, it's pretty lame. And this latest study, albeit from a sample of one, makes it even more lame. But let's have a quick look at a few of these lame booster insults. 
can just tell me to inform you to take the fifth booster immediately to stop the new variants. Please make an appointment to get your booster now. Hmm, not sure who Kenk is or what these variants is that they are talking about. Please get your booster, possibly five if you can. What, only five? Take your booster, lady. Well, it's always nice to be called a lady. Doesn't happen very often. How much boosters do you recommend? I'm thinking of taking 15. Well, 15 is more than the five that the other guys were suggesting, but they've still got a long way to go before they get to 217. Get your booster and take mine too. Oh, that's nice. A generous anti-vaxxer. Most of them are assholes. I'm glad you have been able to get your booster. Actually, that one wasn't a lame insult. It was actually a reply to a comment from me from back when I had a lot less comments and was able to reply to them all. It was actually from before little Cindy here was even born. You can see why the booster insult is so confusing, though. So why is it that anti-vaxxers think telling someone to get their booster is such a devastating insult? Well, possibly because the people delivering the insults are actually just scared of needles. So the thought of getting vaccinations is terrifying for them because it involves needles. After all, it couldn't just be that they are scared of regular medications as a number of anti-vaxxers actually advocated taking ivermectin daily to avoid COVID, despite the fact that it didn't even work. Now, if you are someone with a needle phobia, rest assured that you are not alone. Depending on the study, the incidence is believed to be anywhere from 3.5% to 20% of the population. Of course, very few people would think getting stuck with needles is fun, but for someone with needle phobia, the anxiety that they feel is out of proportion of what you'd expect from a little prick. If you are one of these people, I w would just like to assure you that the needles and syringes that they use for vaccination are nowhere near as big as these. And if the person giving you the injection knows what they're doing, which I don't, you generally don't even feel it. So don't be scared. Look, Cindy's not scared. You're not scared at all, are you? You're not scared. You're not scared. That being said, I can relate to irrational fears. I am absolutely terrified of heights, but I have learned over the years to overcome my fear. So I can still enjoy activities that involve being exposed to heights. And this is me abseiling off North Head in Sydney, which is 83 metres above sea level. And if you're from the US, abseiling is what you guys call rappelling and 83 metres is 272 feet. So if you know someone who likes to use the booster insult, please share this video with them so that they know it is possible for them to overcome their needle phobia and get the same benefits from vaccines as other people. If you'd like to look further into the data I presented, I provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little Cindy a treat and I'll try and get her to come back. So with a treat, come on, Cindy, here we go. Want a treat? Want a treat? There we go. There's Cindy having a treat that some of you very generous people have helped pay for. And we really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to join the cool kids and stay informed, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.